Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. It's a brand new week. Welcome to Afternoon Express. My name's Jeannie Dean. Welcome indeed. I'm Bonnie Bully. You're totally rocking that choker. Thank you. I'm absolutely loving it. But if you're loving what we're wearing, at the end of the show, you can pop over to our Facebook page or our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, to find out where we get these lovely outfits. But you know what? It's never really about the outfit for me. It's never completely about the outfit. My favorite thing in my wardrobe is always the shoes, because <laughs> shoes always fit. And I mean, ta-da, these are pretty and, amazing. And shoes feature a lot on the show today, <laughs> and you'll find out why. OK, well, exactly that. Yeah. So today we have this incredible woman. She's a professional dancer. Her name is Tackies. She's going to be in our audience, uh, in, our, in our loft, and she started the most incredible business. It's called Rocking in Heels, and you get to go to her dance classes and literally learn how to dance and rock yeah. in heels. <laughs> and today on Winner Home on Afternoon Express, our design contestants are halfway through their bathroom challenge. Um, we catch up with them to see what they're working with. Yeah. And Danilo's obviously whipping up something tasty in the kitchen. Yes, good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to a brand new week. I'm Danilo Aquista. So today, we have a first-time guest chef with us in the loft. So I want you to give a very big and warm welcome to Afternoon Express. Candice Bonnington, welcome. Thank you. It's good to have you. So just this weekend, by the way, I had a great weekend. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, no, it was good. Good I'm stuff. I was always discussing about weekends because I never have my same gym routine on a weekend. I sort of take a nice and easy backseat. But I got into a very intense conversation about how healthy and good for your skin raw veganism is. And so I'm so glad we have you in the loft with us today because you're going to be teaching us how to make a simple, delicious treat using yes. raw vegan ingredients. That I am. So what is it? Well, it's called raw caramel slices and all it is essentially is using nuts, uh, dates, vanilla essence, nut butters, honey, pretty much to make something moderately healthy. Obviously everything okay. in, in moderation and balance. <laughs> um, if you had to eat the entire dish, you'd probably not well, feel that great, but yeah, <laughs> everything in moderation. So. Okay. Well, it doesn't have meat in it, so I'm a little bit skeptical, but I'm excited to try. <laughs> Raw veganism is something that everyone's been talking about at the moment. It's the new health craze. So if you want to try and start somewhere by making something delicious that you can eat at any point in the day, you're welcome to go and find this recipe on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. There, the shopping list will also be available for you. So let's start taking healthiness to another level by starting with dessert. How about that? Jeannie and Bunny are on the couch, though. Hmm. Now, she started formal dance training at the age of nine. She was trained in modern, contemporary and hip-hop at some of the world's best dance studios in the US, UK and South Africa, as well as ballet, jazz and Spanish dance. Now, apart from choreographing African and international music videos, she also gives unique classes called Rocking in Heels, where women learn how to dance in heels and get a workout at exactly the same time. Joining us in the loft is Takis. How are you, my darling? I'm good, how are you? So good to see you again. Thank You're you looking amazing me. as always. You too. <laughs> Before we get started on your dancing, yeah. this is really important for me. How did you acquire that nickname? Tackies. Yes. Oh my gosh. It happened in primary school. So my history teacher couldn't pronounce Ngateko, which is my real name, Ngateko, right? Ngateko, yeah. And I always used to ask her, like, I had her for the last period. I was like, ma'am, please can I leave for class? Like five minutes before class. Yeah. And I had my sneakers under my arm and then my my top bag. And then she got annoyed one day. She's like, you're always asking to leave class early. I'm just going to call you Tackies because you're always wearing the, uh, holding those shoes. Everyone started laughing. So it followed me into high school, after oh, high school. Hilarious. Yeah, and it stuck. But I kind of like it because now it actually it makes sense, it makes sense what now. I do. Yeah. Well, not in tackies. We don't wear no, tackies no, 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 no. anymore. Only for the gym. Only for the gym. And it was your mom who first discovered your dancing capabilities. How did that come about? Yes. So my mom, when I was six, I remember she wanted me to start ballet, and I was like, ah, oh, those kids don't look cool. I don't want my to do ballet. My mom made me start ballet. <laughs> exactly. I <love> so, ballet. <laughs> so I was in denial about dancing. I'm like, no, man, I want to do cool stuff. Because I used to watch music videos, and she always used to say you're going to be a dancer one day. Because I used to, like, wow. copy them. But I didn't, like, notice, you know. She'd just see me dancing and take videos and stuff. Um, and then, okay, I started being stubborn. I finally did it at the age of nine. That's when wow. I started training. Because, yeah, I'm good at it. So yeah. I had to Ooh. just get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, have you seen her dance before? She's not just good at it. She's, She's amazing. amazing. Yeah. You're fascinating to watch, actually. Yeah. So you. how did you go from just being good at dancing, like, from a school level, yes. and then eventually end up overseas and training professionally, like Janet Jackson level? Yeah, so I'm, I'm a very curious person. So in terms of dancing, I thought that there was more than just going to a dance school. Um, so I decided to save up money by myself. Um, and then I went to, my, to LA for the first time. Wow. Oh, my gosh, it was so epic. I was only supposed to be there for a month. How so old were you? I was... 18. And you went on your own? I went on my own. Oh. I was like, you know what, I need to see what's out there because I was so curious. It's courageous. So I got out there and 
oh my gosh, I got there and I thought I couldn't dance. I was like, I'm not staying here for a month. I'm going to stay here for more months. And then yeah. oh. I'll probably be as epic as they are. Because international dancers are so amazing. Yeah. 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 And having trained at that level, do you think that it gives you a, a confidence edge as compared to other dancers in South it Africa? It does, definitely. Because, um, because that confidence is like some other type it of is. confidence. Conf because you also like know more than people who don't want to train internationally. Um, yeah. Also, they've, they're far forward than we are. We learn the things afterwards or things will only come out here after like six months but when I go there because I go there every year now it's a thing I do I train there every year for about mm. a month or two months um, but when I come back I'm like yeah I can do this I'm better than everyone you know and it's good to have that confidence because you'll be even better at your craft exactly. but obviously don't be like cocky about it but yeah. still like rockets. And then from where, what, I mean, what was that moment that you decided, look, I'm dancing, I'm choreographing, I'm the best, yes. but now I need to create a business out of it, which is where Rocking and Heels started. Yes. What was that moment that, you know, made this business come into fruition? So when I was in LA in 2012, um, I decided to start something of my own because I kept going to someone else's classes. And I also saw how, how people felt when they were being taught by amazing people. So I was like, you know, let me bring it back home and try something new. And I want to do something totally different, like um, something in heels. And I've always loved fitness, but I never got into it. So I created dance fitness class called Rocking in Heels. And I love using the word rocking, or I'm going to rock these shoes. So that's also how the name came about exactly. as well. Yeah. yeah. And apart from just the fitness element of it, do you find that women start to find more confidence in their bodies and start to fall in love with their bodies yes. as it's a result of like thing. moving in those... I'm sure, I can imagine it's quite sexy. It is. It's very sexy. And you know you know when you put on like a pair of shoes, you get that feeling of, oh my gosh, I feel taller. Yeah. My bum the is posture just dry. Changes. Posture changes. Yeah. Everything. Everything. So also with that, I was in LA when I did a heels class there, but it was a professional one, but I did turns, jumps. It was for professional dancers. But the feeling I had of putting my shoes on, I was like, I need to do something with this feeling. I can't just leave it. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah, I brought it back home and I just see how women feel even better. Even if they've had a bad day, they still love taking selfies, even if like <laughs> they're stressed, but I just love that about heels. Yeah. Okay, but how you feel aside, I mean, I love a pair of heels. Yes. But does it do something different to your your body actually training in high heels like I could imagine you tighten up everything a lot more when you actually yeah. you can imagine yeah. dancing in heels yeah. your yeah. calves and are going to be a little bit more increase the likelihood of getting bunions yes. and corns but that's your, the size. Yeah. yeah you can no. hurt yourself I suppose what <laughs> happened like if you wear your shoes the whole day like if yeah. you're going to wear yeah. a pair of heels the whole day then obviously you'll get corns you'll see flames, um, but yeah. the thing is you're on a platform so it's harder, like if you do squats or sways on like heels, you work extra hard than you would if you're just wearing sneakers. Is that so? Will it yes. tighten up things a little bit quicker? Everything. I'm, I'm telling you, people are going to look at me funny at the gym because I'm going to be in there with heels squatting. <laughs> what kind of traffic do your classes attract? Like what kind of women are you finding are drawn to your classes? Um, it's definitely between the ages of... 23 to 42. Really? Um, yeah, and it's oh, it's corporate wow. women. They love it because also a lot of women go through so much and they just want to get away because I've created a safe space for people to just, mm. actually not even people, women to just come together because mm. we, yeah. we all like, like not us, like most women like bashing other women and I don't like that. Okay, but you say like not us, but let, yes. let's chat women and like body issues. Yes. Considering that's your cross section, that's your market. I mean, even we have body issues. Yes. I mean, I don't know you so much. No, no, no. I mean, and I wonder, women have body issues all the time. Do you see success stories where women have insecurities and hang ups and issues, and then from being in your class a little while, you see them kind of flourish and build their confidence yes, a little bit more? Definitely. Um, and I also actually noticed it first with my mother because um, after I lost my dad, like I saw her go through depression, but she didn't notice that I saw it. Um, so oh. I felt like I had to be stronger for me and her at the same time. Um, yeah. But also what kept her smiling is if I heard a song and I like pop and like dance, that made her <laughs> smile. So I was like, you know what? I need to help women no matter what they're going through. I mean, yeah. I, I find women who come from abusive relationships, women who have horrible friends, like they smile in their face, next thing they talk about bad uh, about their bodies. They need to reclaim their power. Yes. It's a space for them to, yeah. Exactly. So when they come to my class, like at the end of class, I'll hear stories like, oh my gosh, techies, you've just put a smile on my face. And then they'll tell me the story that they've been going through. Or It's just amazing to hear and yeah. see. And also, a few women have lost a lot of weight. Oh, say no more. I'm there. I'm starting. Yes. <laughs> After the break, Takis will be giving us a demonstration of her amazing rocking and heels workout. And in the kitchen, we're going meat-free Monday with a raw vegan salted caramel slice. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I always have a very big smile on my face when I'm inside the kitchen because just this afternoon I met a whole bunch of students from Heathfield High who were saying that they love everything that we make on the show on Afternoon Express. It brings a smile to their face, it makes them drool and gets them creative in the kitchen. And so that's exactly why today we're experimenting slightly differently today in the loft. Candice Boddington is our guest chef and we're going uh, raw vegan on the show today. It's been on a lot of people's tongues at the moment, raw veganism and, and yes. the health benefits of it, uh, of not cooking anything and obviously keeping it uh, vegan, uh, i.e. no meat at all. What are yes. the health benefits? Well, I mean, I think it just depends on who you are as a person and, you know, your physical activity, what you do in the day, mm. your nutritional needs. I mean, everyone's different. Um, I just like to keep my snacks and treats vegan just okay. because it allows me to not have so much refined sugar, mm. too much flour, too much processed nonsense, really. Okay. Um, so just when it comes to treats itself, I keep it vegan. But Overall, I love my meat. Yeah. I love a, lot, my a lot of ladies have always said that the one greatest uh, benefit of going raw vegan is that the effect it has on your skin and on your hair. And they always say that obviously there's a lot more shimmer and you last longer. I don't really know those benefits. <laughs> but what we're going to start with today is a nice delicious treat. To obviously, start with dessert. Make it taste delicious before you incorporate it into your full lifestyle. So let's get started. All right. So first things first is we're going to make the base. The mm. dessert itself is three layers. So it's one, the base, the two, the caramel in the middle, and two, three, sorry, the chocolate on the top. Ooh, yum. Okay, so we're going to start with adding in almonds and cashews. So that will be pretty much the main base. And I'm just Oops. dropping it everywhere. There we go. Caught one. Nice, thank you. I'm now useful in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we add four dates. That just helps to bind. Mm -hmm. um, then we have vanilla powder. You can use vanilla essence, but the beauty with vanilla powder is that you, you use less, which oh, is essentially really nice. Because it's got obviously a lot more rich flavor. It's pungent. It's, yeah. what do you call it? Condensed. I don't know you know and then I mean. you, I'm just using one tablespoon of coconut milk, but you can use water as well. It's okay. perfectly fine. It's a really pretty jar. All right. Mm. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we she's just... as ADD as I am, and she. <laughs> but by the way, seeing you've got almonds in there as well as cashews and the dates in there. So a little bit of a joke that one of our, our one of our creative team members wrote. We said like, oh, by the way, so it's like almonds and and cashews are going on a date. <laughs> but we we won't say that. We'll just leave it as it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> Do then all of that up? Pretty much. That's always fun when it stops working. Oh, I think I think maybe what you have done is... Oh, there you go, the lid. <laughs> okay. Da da da! This is my favourite part, it's like stand by and watch, it's like watching paint dry, it's like... Yeah, this does take a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, obviously the noise doesn't help either. Ah, no, well it's totally okay. It's, it is how the process works. So this is obviously going to create that nice crunchy bottom layer of, of the treat yeah, itself. Um, it actually doesn't end up being that crunchy. You'll see now when it's almost done. Oh, it really looks delicious. It ends it? up more like a crumble. Mm. So if you can imagine what a crunchy and a brownie if those had to combine. Or have a, have a child, this would be the offspring <laughs> of that. Pretty much. Okay. And okay. obviously, just by the those of you who are wondering, what is veganism or raw? Raw veganism obviously doesn't include any uh, kinds of meats or any dairy products that are uh, byproducts of any kind of animal. Plus, that they've also incorporated that nothing gets cooked. So you'll see we're blending things and keeping things as raw as possible. And they obviously said that that's got a lot more nutri nutritional value to it. Because if you cook something, potentially the nutrients gets, gets taken out. 100%. Okay. So would you like to help me take this out? Sure. So this goes like that. And then you can just press it down on here. You can be my little helper today. I don't know if I want to take this off for now, so I can get that out of the way. Let's no, put that there. Perfect. I get to do something. I always like chefs that are not shy to make me do things in the <laughs> in the loft kitchen. Okay, so I actually use my fingers. To Go be for honest. it. We know I watch I saw her watch her hands, so it's all good. <laughs> and you just press it down. Normally I use an eight by eight um, tray. Okay. Just it allows the shape to hold so mm -hmm. you can cut it into perfect little squares. Okay. And I enjoy symmetry. All those details, however, <laughs> are on the website. So don't worry if you are wondering, like, oh, why does it not look like it fits into there? Don't worry. We're just yeah. showing exactly how to make the process look, uh, how it should look once it's done. Okay, yes. cool. Okay, oh, so I see you what can, you're saying. So you can carry on pushing down there if sure. you'd like. I can. I'm very happy to. And that is just and then the let's base. Do the rest. Oh, is this the base? This is what we're just finishing off right now. Yeah. And we'll show you how to it. do the other it's layers a little bit easy. later. Um, and I think that's also what I enjoy about vegan food is that 
a lot of the time it's just really quick and simple. Mm, okay. Nothing needs to rely on an oven. Oh, which okay. is great. And <laughs> uh, so we're not having to do this layer just yet. This layer will do just now. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So all you guys have to do is go to our website to get this delicious recipe. It's a nice way to get yourself introduced to raw veganism if you want to go uh, start with that. It has a lot of health benefits to it. It's on afternoonexpress.co.za. The shopping list is also available for you right over there. Let's go talk dancing in heels back on the couch. So before the break, we got to know a professional dancer, Techies, and why she started her rocking in heels classes. She's back now, along with some gorgeous ladies and gents, to show us just how easy and effective the rocking in heels workout is. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! <laughs>
seen the look on Danilo's face? He was just like, <laughs> Do I? Thank you so much. That was incredible. Your Thank spine you. literally snakes as you move. I mean, that one, I mean, I'm not even going to They're all back. Don't amazing. worry, I'll teach you. What the, I know. The <laughs> You're about to teach us, right? <laughs> yeah. It's about to go down for you guys now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about to go down. Well, well um, we've got a bit of a surprise for Danilo as well. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be joining us. Come over. Oh, really? Are we kidding me? Yeah, and I have a surprise for you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I refuse. No, this is not going yeah. to be good. I'll just stand on my tippy toes. I don't actually have to be in heels, do I? You do. They're so comfortable. Trust come me. Come on, come on. Let's go to an ad break. I'll decide in the end. Let's see afterwards what you guys think. Should I do this? Shouldn't I? Let's see. Oh, no. I'm confident to these. They're very comfortable. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we're very excited to see Danilo dancing in heels. But first, it's only on its second year, but SABC One's Uzalo has already earned one of the biggest viewerships on SABC. It tells the story of two family dynasties and the two young men who carry their hopes and legacies as they learn the complexities of money, family and love. We took a trip to Durban to meet up with the director and cast on set. What makes Uzalo unique and different is first and foremost the setting. So we're the only show of this magnitude that shoots um, in KZN, like on location in Guamashu. So the environment that the world of the show is set in is the actual environment we shoot in, in reality. I believe there was a news article that one of the creators read about a story where a child had been raised by not their biological parents and they didn't know that and it came out later. That was the spark that generated the idea for the show. <laughs> play the character of Ayanda Mdleje. So Ayanda is raised by a priest and is actually the gangster's son. But now it's a whole thing of upbringing, nature versus nurture. And this thing always kicks in because Ayanda is so rebellious. He's, he's got this, this charm, this wit, this charisma that, that, that he gets from his dad. And, 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 and he's so rebellious and headstrong and he always does things very dubious in, 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 in character. And he's got this demeanor about him. And he doesn't know it until like late at the end of the first season that is actually the, 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 the gangster's son. The character that I play on Uzalo is Mangeli Mapumulo. She happens to be the female matriarch of a child-headed household. She loves God. She's very feisty. She's a lover of love. In our second season, we're still aiming for the same fast-paced, exciting Uzalo that it was at the beginning. So the change from telenovela to soapy was so that the show could continue in its long-running form. It took a lot to get into a character like Ayanda. Uh, it's just allowing myself to be vulnerable, allowing myself to be sincere, and living the character as truthfully as possible without bringing okay into the character. Wow, there's so many similarities between Smangele and I. Um, we both have a very good working relationship with God. He plays a very huge part in my daily life. We both love music. It comes with the territory of being raised by an elder in a church. <laughs> and I love the fact that she is relentless in pursuing whatever it is that is she's faced with at that moment. I really love that about her. <laughs> You're portraying and, and relaying true indigenous South African stories to the world. So it's amazing to be in people's living rooms for like half an hour, uh, just, just giving them a piece of reality and people relating and gravitating towards that and, and making people feel a certain way, whether it's a conviction, whether it's they, they're sharing a, uh, uh, a meal, whether it's laughter, whether it's a tear. It's amazing to be a part of that journey. <laughs> The show has definitely not reached its pinnacle, so we are just going from strength to strength. We're all, you know, we have a team that's really excited about the show, who really believe in it, and every season we aim to not move back to where we started, but just to keep building on everything that we've achieved. Lily. 
All right, so the challenge has been set. Danilo is looking like Tootsie in a fabulous pair of heels. <laughs> and of course, they're nude, which goes with your outfit. Oh. Now, you've, you've got a couple of moves planned for us. The, pre the presenter dance off. Okay. Oh God. Take it away. Ready? Let's do it. Yeah. I'm ready. It's I, I, not a competition, guys. Everything's guys a competition in this room. You're always complaining about trying to find me a wife. I'm never going to find anyone ever again after Come, this no, moment. Dance, okay, drop. Dad, don't watch. One, two, three, drop. One, two, three, drop. Yes. Drop. Nice. Drop. See, there we go. Drop. It was leg yes. day, it was drop. painful. Oh, please, your heels aren't even drop. that high, Delilah. Nice. Yeah. Now we're going to pop both our feet together. Going down. Oh, okay. Yes, and up. And down. And up. And down. And up. Again, and down. A dying face. And up. I look like I'm struggling to down. get, get Now we're going to step forward with the right. And forward, forward, back. Yes. There we go. Play with it. Nice. Touch your body. Woo. Yes. <laughs> Maybe don't touch your body. Don't touch my body. I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing okay. I think I did okay. Nice one. Nice one. Well done. Well done. So you're not going for it. Thank you. I'm already sweating. My thighs are already sore. It's a workout. I'll get to your class. I can see already. I've seen her run in heels. I'm pretty sure anyone can dance in heels. Well done. Well done. I did not envy you. This is painful. You do need a bit of a wax on the top there. Oh yeah, just on the big toe. Gorgeous. Can nice. I have my man card back from someone, please? No, that's good. That's good. so gone. It's burnt. <laughs> okay. That was amazing. Thank you awesome. so much. But now we need to go to the kitchen because after that, I think we certainly need oh a little God. bit of sustenance. Yes, okay. So, I mean, dancing is one thing, but you've got to stay fit and physically strong so much more than anyone else because you've got all those classes to take. So I've decided... I've put together a little Nutri Blast for you, okay. which keeps your body in shape and then keeps you high energy so that you can handle all of your rocking in heels classes yes. with maximum, maximum strength. So, I mean, what do you, I mean, do you ever go on a diet or do you just burn so many calories in your dancing classes? Um, I don't believe I'm in diets. I believe yeah. in just eating clean and healthy. Yeah. So that's what I do. I just make sure that I have my greens, I have my fruits, I have lots of water. Yeah. And do you stick to it? Or do you every now and then have like a fat Sunday, a little cheat day? You know, it's actually difficult if I'm traveling. It's difficult to stay on and like then. my eating clean, especially oh, yeah. if you go on set and then they offer you like a burger and it looks so good. <laughs> <I> just <laughs> wanna, Do you like, eat it when you're in that environment? Um, I'll just take off the bread and like maybe have the patty with the salad. Oh, good girl. That yes. discipline is something that I've still <laughs> got to learn how to possess. Okay, but this is what we're going to make for you now. Okay, we're going to throw in a little bit of kale. I I promise you, you're going to enjoy this. Kale sometimes smells like it's very leafy and almost from the ground, yes. but I promise you, it is so healthy and so good for you. And it's not an overbearing flavor um, in a Nutri Blast. Okay, then I've got some banana. Great for energy. I know, exactly. And it's a slow releasing carbohydrate Definitely. as well. The potassium is so good for you. Chuck in some ice. We've got some fresh orange juice, I think it is. Oh, nice. Over there. I think it might be a blend with like orange and mango. Yes. Then a bit of yogurt as well. I never go for flavoured yogurts. I always stick to the Bulgarian yogurts because there's no sugar in it. Yes. So it's like the That's purest. That's good, yeah. And it's a protein as well. Okay, and then berries, berries for the flavour. Do you I love berries? Do you juice at all or have like nutri blasts in your day? No, definitely oh. I do. Um I have it in the morning. Yeah. And I'll have it for one of my snacks during the day. Brilliant. Yes. Because it's basically a meal. It is. A very healthy yeah. one. Yeah. And tasty as well. Okay, so we've locked that up. Let's blast awesome. it. Awesome. Getting all of that goodness in. Very good. Yeah. And I think this one's going to be really tasty. We always do completely different combinations. So do you juice a lot? I do. Well, I do this. Yes. <laughs> so let's open it. Ugh. I don't, should I help you? <laughs> You've got better muscles than I do. Go for it. You see, it wasn't even hard Here for we her. Go. <laughs> I'm going to have to get back in the gym. No, just come to Rocking in Hills. I know. Um, I'm totally, totally going to join your classes. And now you've got uh, classes in Joburg and in Cape Town. Yes, and in okay. Pretoria as well. How can people get hold of your classes and where can they start? Um, they can follow Rocking in Hills on Instagram and on Twitter. It's yeah. Rocking in Hills. 
um, they can email me on bookings at Rocking in Hills or they could follow me at Techie7 on Instagram and Twitter. And how often do you have your classes in a week? So class in Cape Town is every Tuesday, Thursday yeah. and, in, and in Pretoria and then in Santon it's every Monday and Wednesday. Amazing. Yeah. So it's you're up and down, you're travelling. No, and I have, I have instructors as well. Brilliant. Yeah. So that's for you. Thank you. It looks High so energy good. to be able to go and teach classes all over the country and Can rock cheers? in heels. Yay. Thank you so much. What do you think of it? Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is actually the best one yet. Mm. I've made a good couple it's so of these. so fresh. This is the best one I'm gonna yet. I'm going to add orange juice. Mm. It's Just amazing, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Delicious, nutritious, and healthy. Visit NutriBullet.co.today for more inspiration and ideas and start that Nutri living today. Find out what works for you in working towards that healthy lifestyle. Now, we'll be right back with Win a Home on Afternoon Express. Today, we catch up with our design contestants halfway towards completing their bathrooms. We'll be right back. Hi, yummy. Welcome back, and yes, it's time for Winner Home and Afternoon Express, where we follow three talented young designers as they transform three empty properties at Valdivia Estate into dream homes, using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. And at the end of it all, we're giving away one of those completed apartments worth over three million rand to one lucky viewer. So today we have our three design contestants with us on the loft. Danilo's on the couch. Well, man, time is really flying with Winner Home on Afternoon Express. It might be the start of a fresh new week, but our three design contestants are feeling the pressure for sure. It's halfway through the completion of their second brief, the bathroom, which can be one of the trickiest rooms to complete in the house. So we're back with our design contestants, Joanne, Rudolph, and Minentle. Guys, the pressure is on. Are you guys popping yourselves, <laughs> literally and figuratively? <laughs> Minentle, how's it going? Yeah, definitely. Um... The bathroom is really like the toughest because if you think about it, it's, it's like the most used room. So yeah, the, the, you have to really be careful on how you organize your space. Yeah. And there's a lot of wet works. Okay, so that's the generic answer. Rudolf, how's your bathroom going? Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a slow progress. Um, you need to make, do a lot of planning from, from the start. And um, so it's just, you know, a lot of things that need to be done before, before the next can happen. Completion, yeah. yeah. Johnny, yourself? So some things take a lot of time, as the floor that I'm planning, I needed more time for that. So I don't think it's going to, I don't know if it's going to work out the, the way I want it to. But it's quite technical, the bathroom, you have to yeah. do the floors first, or the, when yeah. you start with the walls first, you can't do the floors. So you mentioned the flooring, uh, obviously you're halfway through the challenge already. Yes. Uh, talk me through that struggle that you're going through. What is the issue? Why is it taking so long? So I wanted like a concrete uh, type of finish, and the concrete floor was already uh, was the cast when it was built, and they put screed on it already. So um, what I wanted to have is just a clean concrete floor. With that, I, I would have put my uh. own finish on. But now there's already screed on, so I need to I needed to put on a new level of screed and color it. And so I'm hoping that will work out. But I don't think the floor I wanted will take like eight days, and Sheesh. I don't have eight days for floors. You don't even have eight days. Yes. That's a thing. Everything's yeah. going to set. It's going to take time. Is it yes. bad planning on your part? Is it just the suppliers? What's been the issue? Uh, maybe I should have. Planned the bathroom floor a bit earlier. I should have okay. started like four weeks ago with the bathroom floor. Okay, but you can get that done in time. I have faith in you. <laughs> I mean, actually, you've had issues with your walls. Um, I wouldn't say much of an issue, but my wall is like the main feature in, in my bathroom. Okay, which is going to take a lot of your attention and focus. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the, the elements in the room that's going to determine the color palette that I'm going for. Okay, talk so, me through it. Uh, it's this very interesting mosaic. I can't give much away. It's just. <laughs> have to keep uh, something to this, <laughs> okay. uh, suspense. Yeah, but it's um, a very modern mosaic uh, with a very geometric pattern, uh, okay. which is going to influence the rest of the things I include in my part. Yeah. Bearing in mind, mosaics take a long time to put together. If they're out of alignment, it can look really kitsch at times. So make sure that you're putting all the time and effort into making sure that it looks perfect. Yeah, it's definitely um, a risk. Yeah. So it's either going to work Pay or, or not. Yeah. Oof. But I'm willing to take the risk. <laughs> Drama on Winner Home Season 3. Uh, Rudolf, you've had some concerns around the glass within your bathroom because I think one of the things that you guys are starting to realise is that things need to happen in certain orders. Um, um, what is the, the problem with the glass there? Yeah, so with, with the glass for the, for the showers, you need to do the wet works first. So all the tiles need to be on the walls, um, on the floors, mm -hmm. before you can get the contractors out to come and take the final measurements um, and then only go into manufacturing. Ah, I see. So, um, so you're going to have a glassless a bathroom or is it eventually going to get done? 
Oh, how much do you want me to give away? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was, it's yeah, so funny because see. the last time we chatted to you about your first challenge, you guys were very open about sharing what you were doing and things that you had designed and thought about. Now you're starting to realize how tight this competition is becoming. You've seen the first room. It's now the second room that you guys are working on and you're really starting to keep things close to your chest, your cards close to your chest. Interesting to see what goes on with, with all of these rooms. They sound fantastic. These ideas are sounding really incredible and I'm glad you guys are holding on to big ideas. But what's still left for you to do, Minentle? Uh, well, I just got my, my flooring done. Uh -huh. um, also starting on getting my walls done. So what's left for me to do is to finish up the wall, um, especially the mosaic I mentioned. Yeah. And then it's fixing all the, um, the other elements. Okay, cool. All so, right, so you are on track. Yeah, I feel like I'm on Fantastic. track. Fantastic. Four ones. Rudolph. Uh, we're just doing the electrical work, so all the lighting that needs to go in, and then the final plumbing for the vanities. Mm, so all your basic designs, your real sort of conceptual work is pretty much finished. It's now just the practicalities. Yeah, now it's just pulling it all together and, and giving the final presentation. Okay, cool. Does that make you nervous, Rane? How far are you? <laughs> so my tiling is done and my walls are painted. Okay. So I need to get my uh, vanities in now. And I have sure. fit. <laughs> cool. So for those, maybe for those people out there who are maybe starting with a new bathroom or renovating their homes, what is the one thing you didn't think you'd have a challenge with in a bathroom that you now are having a challenge with? Uh, I'd have to say um, the vanities because I'm designing my own vanities um, okay. using Caesar stone. Usually you buy your vanity ready. Okay. So that's like one of the challenging things. Planning, 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 planning when it comes yes, to these things. Consult, definitely. get the planning done. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm going to let you go off to go and finish off your apartments and your, particularly your bathrooms. Make sure they look incredible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, well, if the pressure isn't enough already, one of our judges, John Case from ARC, went to go check out a design contestant's progress for himself. With the contestants' bathrooms now at the halfway mark, John Case, one of the founders of ARC, pays a visit to their site to assess each bathroom and see how the young designers are progressing with their projects. And he begins with Minentle's bathroom. So here we're in the main bathroom. It's a neutral color palette. The darker floors might add some accentuation or a little bit of contrast. I think Minetli's bathroom is, is uh, it's starting to come along. The, the only criticism I have at this point is the tile joints aren't lining up with the actual plumbing fixtures, which for me is a little bit of an issue. The mosaic looks like it's going to add a little bit of definition in the bathroom. Uh, it's, it's definitely quite a vibrant pattern. But I think, you know, we'll, we will look forward to seeing a bit more detail and see the bathroom design starting to come, come to life. Over in Joanne's bathroom, work is forging ahead despite a problem. A pipe is leaking, threatening to ruin her floors, but tiling must continue. Whoa! One of the, uh, the hazards of the building industry happening right here, for the guy tiling and a, and a, and a leaking pipe. You know, going into the, into the bathroom and seeing guys tiling and at the same time there's a huge water leak, so <laughs> it's just the nature of the industry sometimes, I guess. I think Joanne's bathroom is coming along nicely. I like the fresh, sort of clean colour palette. So at this point in time, I'd say that I'm preferring the, the style that she's going for. The round mosaics definitely give it like a seamlessness and, you know, that contrasting with the concrete sort of Caesar stone vanity. I think is a, a nice touch. It, it just gives it a real fresh, you know, quite, quite 21st century look. John's final stop is Rudolph's bathroom, where he's making some bold choices, like the herringbone pattern in metro tiles on the wall. I think uh, Rudolph has got, it seems like he's got a good eye for design. Um, I think, you know, there's one or two small details that, that I've seen in the bathroom that maybe need a bit of fine tuning. But, but generally, I think, you know, he's taken a step forward and, you know, he's, he's, he's showing a little bit of boldness, which I think in a competition like this is important. So the competition is heating up. Now remember, you can head over to privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite bathroom. By casting your vote, you stand a chance of winning paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand. You will also be automatically entered into the grand prize draw where you could win one of those completed apartments at Valdivie worth more than 3 million Rand. So make sure you enter now. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Definitely one of the most interesting episodes we've had thus far as I've tried to attempt 
to do this dancing exercise thing in heels. And it was pretty funny. Thanks for all the love on the social media sites. I must say that it's quite funny that I'm in the kitchen right now because we were speaking a bit about um, the idea that it's heels and men wearing heels. So man plus heels makes meals. And that's what we're also making in the kitchen today. <laughs> meals. Uh, if you want to come up with your own pun of what men in heels looks like, you're welcome to go and find that on the social site. So Candice Boddington is our guest chef for today, and we're going raw vegan in the loft. We're making a delicious treat that's got a slight bit of a health element to it. So it's a nice kickstart into the vegan lifestyle. Yes, um, I mean, I, I just don't see it as vegan, because when you taste it, it doesn't really taste like it. Cool. It just tastes like an amazing treat. But yeah, I mean, then if, I'm you're, in. if you're going into the vegan lifestyle, I mean, it's definitely one to add to your cookbook. Cool. So well, say. let's finish it off. So what we've done so far is we've created the base, we've pressed it into the pan. What's yes. next? Okay, so next would be the caramel. Mm -hmm. That's the in-between. So you can use any kind of butter, really. This is almond butter, but in the previous one I made with the macadamia um, coconut cinnamon butter, which Ooh. was amazing. And the macadamia butter still has pieces in it, so okay. it adds that element of crunch, which is really nice. Do you just get these from any kind of retail store, I guess? You can buy them in, in jars? You don't have to yeah. like, make it prior to? No, I mean, okay. you can make it, but I mean, that's that's really okay. excessive. Hey, well, I'm just wanting to know, are they readily available? Because you're mentioning macadamias and, and all kinds of other cinnamons. It sounds like a process, but if you it, can buy it, it off it the shop, It can be great. a process. I personally use uh, butternut which is quite a nice brand, and they have an a range of flavors which can obviously change the inside of the, um, the mixture. So, okay. okay, so I've added the almond butter, the honey, then some vanilla essence, and then this is quite a healthy hand of uh, Himalayan salt, but it's Ooh, only need about that much, to okay, be honest. Because cool. you want to create it, it's a salted caramel, I think you yes. want to get that sort of flavor yes. out of there. And, and it then, complements the sweetness nicely. It does. It really, really does. And I'm a fan of sweet and mm. salty together. And just, just a quick little note for myself. One thing that I learned from our other resident chefs in the loft when they do come in is the idea that uh, vanilla essence is something you can't necessarily look over. Don't just put any kind of other kind of vanilla in there because obviously vanilla essence has got a much, uh, much stronger vanilla flavor than something else would. So don't try and sneak it out of there and find something that's slightly a little cheaper or potentially watered down because you want that really strong vanilla flavor in there. So keep, keep essence if you do see it. Cool. Alright, so you just mix the ingredients Ta -da. together and you place Simple. it on top of your <laughs> I have a good laugh at myself because I think most people would say that the benefits of raw veganism is that it's like good for your skin, it's good for your hair, it's good for your body and uh, for anti-aging. I'm just saying it's good, it's easy to make because there's no cooking involved. I just exactly. like mix things together and put them put them on a plate. It's like eat raw raw broccoli and things and, and it's good for your health. Exactly. Cool, delish. Mm. I think that's honestly why I got intrigued by vegan treats because it's so simple. Yeah. You're lazy like me. We get it. <laughs> cool. So let's, let's move on to the chocolate layer on top. How do okay. we go about preparing so that? So this goes into the freezer now. Okay. Before the chocolate layer gets put on because that needs to set. Okay. Good tip. So that goes into the freezer to cool down. Obviously set itself in the freezer and then the final layer. Yes. Could you find me another one of these? Sure. Pretty, please. Easy. Thank you. Ta-da. I might find a slightly bigger one, but That's it'll do. That's perfectly fine. So this just goes onto a low heat, and you're mixing in your raw cacao powder, mm -hmm. which is a great um, antioxidant. Okay, mixing it in with what? Is that, with is... coconut oil. So the best part about coconut oil is that it allows it to set. Cool, so that's coconut oil and raw cocoa powder, giving it a nice dark chocolate feel to it, basically, without having to have any of that cream or those byproducts that make it not vegan in the process. <laughs> and I'm guessing once that's malted, you just you pour just that pour on, top on top and let and that set. And then you pop it back in the freezer, oh. and then you wait 20, well, 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how impatient you are. Okay, well, I'm very impatient, <laughs> so those are gonna come out of the freezer as fast as I can to make sure that they've set. I'll turn that off for you. Oh, sorry, thank there you. There we go, and we're basically done and can go feed the ladies. Yummy. So you guys can get this recipe from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Everything we make on the show, whether it be delicious or whether it be something that's nutritious, you can find on the website. The, the, obviously, the shopping is also available for you if you want to go there. Come along with me. Let's go and feed these to the ladies. Yay. How yummy. Welcome. Thank you. A lot of sweet treats. And we deserve those sweet treats. No, you can sit on the far side. You can be the head of the table. Oh, wow, guest. lucky me. <laughs> the guests get to be at the head. I cannot wait, I cannot wait to try these. But the fact that they're vegan doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that they're not fattening, they're just a lot exactly. healthier for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just unrefined sugars is okay. what you'll find in most vegan treats, but yes, they are very high in fat um, because of nuts and um, the coconut oil, but they're good fats. So okay. essentially you're feeding your brain still. So you can't eat this like you would I'm a meal. Still you still have to have a healthy, clean meal and then this would be like your treat. Yeah. Yes. 
So if you're prone to treating and sneaking in a few desserty, yummy treats in your day, rather replace those with something like this. It tastes like somewhere. a Snickers bar. It is <laughs> so good. I almost so feel yum? bad for eating it. No, but that's <laughs> the best part. I mean, if, if mm -hmm. you're going to eat something sweet, rather eat natural sugars, natural yes. fats, mm. then go with the processed, refined way where you're not going to get any benefits, you're essentially eating empty cal calories. Here, oh, wow. you're still feeding your brain, you're still feeding yourself some nutrition, so, I mean, it's not as bad. Not guilt-free, because wow. obviously if you eat all of those, <laughs> you're not going to get the, the benefits of it. Hey, wait, we can dance okay. in heels and burn it all off, can't we? Isn't <laughs> exactly. that what we've learned? Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go to your well class done. tomorrow night, I can't yes, wait. Thank I you. can't wait to see you there. This yeah. is amazing. I'm honestly taking my hat off and my heels off to all the ladies out there. <laughs> like, I'm even just walking in, my toes are in pain and my knees are sore. So this is a real... Your knees are sore? My knees are sore. Yeah, it was, it was leg day today, so Who maybe knew, it's a combination huh? of the two. Real yeah. man, Your knees will definitely Luke not Luke be Luke. sore from 30 seconds of rocking in heels, I promise yeah. you. <laughs> Trust I, me, I it's a like, yeah. man, like man flu is not a real thing. It's a bigger <laughs> problem with your knees. Get it checked out. Yeah, okay. your knees I'm shouldn't sorry. hurt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Make sure you guys join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express and get here early because during the first 15 minutes of the show, we're chatting to medical doctor and, medic and media personality Sivo Madikana. And in the kitchen, we're making and going to be going to the opposition of today because we made something super healthy today. We're making a churros with a chocolate dipping sauce. I don't even know what churros yeah. are, mm. but I guess it's we'll like find out. It's like a long donut. It's a Mexican donut. Wow. It's oh. amazing. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. We'll <laughs> thank see you, you then. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was yeah. so awesome. Absolutely. And Candice, thanks for joining us as well Thanks making us these me. treats i hope you enjoy it yeah i'm gonna need to find you on instagram or something for all of your other healthy treats <laughs> i'm gonna rub some oil into my feet good night <laughs> happy eating bye, bye. bye. <laughs> mm -hmm. this is so yummy coming up tomorrow on afternoon express we chat to medical doctor and media personality sivu marikana about his work as ambassador of brothers for life and singer and songwriter konaya performs the hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel good production. Hello, my name is Hidia. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Namibia. Currently, I'm a maintenance planner in the Assets and Operations Department of BP Southern Africa. The hardest thing for me, perhaps, has been developing a career in a male-dominated environment. My hope for the future, in terms of my professional life, is to continue excelling in the field of engineering. Personally, I look forward to having a family in the future. My biggest fear, perhaps, is that I have no fears. Something you might not know about me is I'm currently training for my first half marathon, and I also enjoy knitting. My message to Africans is to continue to allow our warmth and friendliness to shine for the rest of the world to see.